host Javier Vicuna and on today's show we have the lovely Samantha Ramirez here to discuss the Women's History Month and this year's national theme is women who advocate for equity diversity and inclusion and Samantha can you please introduce yourself to our audience yes thank you so much for having me I'm super excited to be here um, and my name is Samantha Ramirez like you said my pronouns are she her ella what did you want me to introduce yourself <laughs> oh myself just yeah. your background your like, background you yeah. Like- yeah 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 <laughs> so um i grew up in san rafael i've been here my whole life and i have a background in working in a variety of nonprofits, um specifically with um partnering with young people so that that has been my passion for a long time and then most recently i started working at the county of marin so i work for oh, the congrats. behavioral thank you i work for the behavioral um Uh, health and recovery services and I've been there for about six months Um, and so yeah I think for me it's really about like serving the community that I grew up in and how special that is Mm -hmm. to be able to help people um, connect them to resources um, and to be able to like create events and create programs that help people feel safe and seen and that bring joy mm-hmm. and that are fun mm-hmm. and, and you were yes you were, and i know that yeah mm-hmm. i was in one of her programs <laughs> yes we'll dive more into that later on but before we get started we're going to start with a little icebreaker question love it and my icebreaker is what is your favorite getaway place here in marin oh here, great here in question. marin i was ready to go international <laughs> I, I'm ready in, to let's keep it local yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay um I would say one of my favorite places is in Nevada, and it's mm-hmm. Stafford Lake Park. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really it's cute. Really super, I, super nice. I went on a lot of field trips with my kids, and they've recently remodeled it, and there's, like, macas. Like, you yeah, know, there is. Um, and um, it's just really relaxing. It's very spiritual. It the, gets really mm, cold. It gets really cold. But it's nice. It's nice. <laughs> um, there's, you know, tables and areas to walk, and there's something, like, spiritual about that place. There's a lot of fire mm-hmm. ceremonies there. And stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I really like Stafford Lake because yeah. you can also hike up there if you keep walking. So it's like you can hike there. You can have a picnic. Yeah. And, so. and I think there's a like a bike thing near there too, like a bike, oh, yeah. bike park kind there's of. A, um, a mountain bike. Mountain oh, biking yeah. park. Yeah. 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 I haven't been there probably in two mm-hmm. years at Stafford Lake, but I really like Cute. that one too. Go back. Because um, mm-hmm. I like that better than Rush Creek, which is like that other kind of like hiking area in Nevada. It gets really hot there. there. It's really, really hot. I don't recommend it. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, I, I think for me, I actually really like going to Sausalito. Oh, cute. I really, really like Sausalito. Um, I don't know, something about just being by the water there, like just walking around. Down, I, I know downtown Sausalito is really small, mm-hmm. but it's like a nice, like just the weather is always really nice there. I like mm-hmm. that cold weather. Mm-hmm. Wait, um, just like in general Sausalito? Yeah, like, just in general, uh, general Sausalito yeah. is like a, a place in Marin that I like mm-hmm. just kind of mm-hmm. going to, um, you know, I, I think it's the most, you could also see like the whole San Francisco yes. from there too, mm-hmm. which is really cool. Mm-hmm. And you see the Golden Gate mm-hmm. Bridge. Um, and at night, it's really nice too. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. really, really nice. And there's a lot of great seafood places to eat there. Oh, yeah. Um, there definitely Yeah. Is. Big fan <laughs> of seafood. So, yeah, overall, I, I would say South Salido is um, a great place. And my dream place to live, actually, like if I were to get a house ever oh, in my me life. Me too. South Salido. I'd love to live in South Salido. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's what I wanted to share. Thank you, guys. Yeah. And for me personally, yes. <laughs> um, for me, it's Tennessee Valley in mm-hmm. Mill Valley. Mm-hmm. Oh. I, I always post about it on my Instagram too. Yeah. I'm like always there. Yeah. It's like my favorite place because. Um, there's like different trails there. So you can mm-hmm. either like just go on a trail or you can go on a hike and it leads mm-hmm. you to a beach and it's like yes. so pretty and just calming. Yes. Just like get away. <laughs> yes. That's yeah. a really nice path and it's mm-hmm. not too hard. Yeah, it's not hard mm-hmm. at all. It's probably like a 30 minute ish walk mm-hmm. or like. How many miles? It's like an, uh, one, a mile and a half oh, or yeah. something. That's yeah. pretty, it's pretty not, party mm-hmm. pace. Yeah. yeah. Cool. But it's really pretty. Mm-hmm. And like you always see like. Like I've seen like foxes there, and I've seen like a bobcat. You always Ooh, see like wildlife, which I like. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Love the icebreaker. Yeah, <laughs> no, that was good. Yeah, no, I really want to go to these places. I know, me too. That's I'm like, I'm right excited. Now, so. Thanks for listening. We'll, yeah. see, we'll catch you later. We're about to go. <laughs> <laughs> we all just gonna hike. Uh. Okay. Thank you guys. Okay, now we're gonna dive right back into it. And before we dive into Women's History Month, I just want to go over how you got into what you're doing now and how that all became. Yeah. So <clears throat> after high school, after graduating from SR, I went to uh, City College in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And it's like a community college. And then yeah. I transferred over to San Francisco State. And I got my bachelor's in social work. <clears throat> social work is a really good um, 
major because it allows you to do a lot of different work. Mm -hmm. So I really knew I wanted to help people, you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, after that, I worked a little bit at Huckleberry Youth Programs and like their college access program, um, which is still going today. And that's that's awesome. What's and the college access program? Is it kind of like uh, just connecting students with, with college yeah. resources? Yeah, it's yeah. And, but it, it has a specialty of like, um, the health profession. So people oh. that want to that want to do things related to health, you know. Mm -hmm. oh, very it's called, cool. It's called Ace Academy now. Um, but um, so after that, and then I went to um, run the after school program at Venetia Valley. Mm. I love that because working with elementary school is super fun. And then I was also able to connect with the families. Um, you know, a lot of immigrant families, a lot of sp Spanish speaking families. And then after doing the after school program, I went to the Youth Commission, which is where mm -hmm. I got to work mm -hmm. with um, Kimberly. And when I started working with you all, and the Youth Commission is all about like empowering empowering young people mm -hmm. to advocate for themselves, to create projects, campaigns, um, uh, to improve their community in a variety of topics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, after that, I went to work out in West Marin for a little bit. And that was a cool experience because there's a lot of different issues out in West Marin. It's mm -hmm. a very rural mm -hmm. area. Um, and then I ended up getting my job where I'm at now at the county. And it's a bilingual outreach and engagement. So really focusing on the Spanish speaking community and making sure that we are connecting them to mental health services, to recovery services, and that we're working on that stigma. There's mm -hmm. a lot of stigma in the Spanish speaking Latino community about what it means to get support for mental health so yeah. we really we really got to work on that um and so i've had like a very um curvy path that has taken <laughs> me to a lot of different um organizations but it's also they're all kind of connected and it, it has really helped me just be somebody that is known by the community mm -hmm. because what connects all of my different jobs is helping people yeah. you know and so that has built kind of this this reputation of people being able to call, call me and ask for help and i think that's key you know mm -hmm. that relationship building um and just even if you switch jobs like still wanting to help people mm -hmm. um I think I think is super important. So that's mm -hmm. kind of how I got to where I'm at now. That's that's, that's a <laughs> lot of accomplishments lot. that you've done in your life. And mm -hmm. uh, actually, just kind of retracting back to what you were sharing is: so did you go to Venetia Valley as yes. when when you were growing up? Yes, it used to be called Gallinas. Gallinas. Oh, geez, no. Oh geez, no. And Wait, the the middle school through yeah, the K through the K, K through eight, through eight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Before it was called um, Galinas or Gallinas in Spanish, and then mm -hmm. they changed the name to Venetia Valley. So that's also like a super special, like full circle moment. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what ha tends to happen a lot when you're kind of doing this nonprofit work yeah. um, mm -hmm. and working with like all these community groups and and seeing people in the community. It's always a full circle yeah. moment. Like I get a lot of those. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I've noticed that too. Because yes. like again, like. Recently for me, like I, I've been invited to go to SR. I know you've been invited to go to SR too to go present and stuff. And yes. it's just, again, another full circle moment for me because it's like I was taking these classes yes. when I was in high school and now I'm presenting at these classes yeah. now, like a whole four years, five years later. So it's yeah. like, it's really cool. Yeah. Um, and it's important for the, for the young people, you know, because because Marin is like segregated and just has a lot of issues around race. It's and a small community. It's a small it's, community. Yeah. And it's especially important for them to see like other Latinos that have gone through school, that have different paths and are doing different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is really important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How what got you into nonprofit, though? Because you said you already majored in it but what made yeah. you yeah yeah so i i honestly when i was in high school i wanted to be a tattoo artist oh yeah. totally different oh, yeah. totally wow. different. and like i already saw myself like on the cover of a magazine like yeah. I, I was, dreaming big, right? yeah, yeah, that's I was cool. like I'm gonna, you know i'm gonna be tatted up everywhere and then i ended up getting two tattoos and they hurt so bad and you're like oh. and i was like this is not for me and so that's when i got into like public health and social work um mm -hmm. and all of those other things but i think it's it the nonprofit work is just really special because it's about working in the community mm -hmm. and and you're able to be really creative mm -hmm. which is yeah. a little different than my job now at the county mm -hmm. where i can still work with the community and help them but i have a lot more rules to follow mm -hmm. you know and so and so i i do miss that about the um about the nonprofits, but it's also important to have people like me in government in a variety of different fields that mm -hmm. really care about the yeah. community yeah. um yeah, especially as a woman of color. Yeah. That's a really big thing. Yeah. And another question I had was how, what has been like the impact that you've seen as a woman going from when you first started out to now, mm -hmm. like the biggest like challenge, I guess that has been. <sighs> yeah, that's, um, that's a really heavy question. I think that there have been a variety of challenges over mm -hmm. the years. I think what makes it really hard is just like, 
Marin is like a complicated place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't live here and haven't grown up here, it's kind of hard to explain how there's like different worlds happening at the same mm -hmm. time. It's very true because uh, we have had some employees here at MCM here at the Multicultural Center of Marin who you know, come from the East Bay. Mm -hmm. And then we talk to them about Marin and they're like, wait, what? Yeah. They're like, they, I did not mm -hmm. get that from Marin at all. Yeah. Um, and I've always kind of had, I've always had this, I've brought, had this conversation recently with you, but I also want to bring it up on the show is that I think Marin is so interesting because it's part of the Bay Area, but it doesn't feel like the yeah. Bay Area. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I feel like when you think of the Bay Area, you kind of think of diversity in a way. Mm -hmm. But what Marin County, it doesn't really bring that, yeah. especially with youth. Like everyone, like even in schools, you see everyone's like within their own yeah. like, race. Segregated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everyone's and, and segregated. The feeling here too, like just the area, like, like when you feel like Bay Area vibes, mm -hmm. this isn't Bay Area. It's not yeah. Bay Area. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> when we think Bay Area vibes, we think East Bay, right? Yeah. yeah. Oakland. Yeah. Um, you or know, like all those areas. The Mission. Area, or the mission or and San Francisco. Go South Bay, you know, yeah, like all those areas. That's when I think like East Bay, mm -hmm. right? Or, or sorry, sorry, Bay Area. Bay. Yeah. Um, and then when I come to Marin, it's just a bunch of old people and very old money. Yeah. And like we've been saying, not a lot of diversity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And and the way that that affects us, like in a in a professional level, is that it makes us really hard. It makes the work really hard oh, yeah. because mm -hmm. it can feel like isolating. You mm -hmm. know, it can feel like we're just coming up against the barrier of like racism all the time. Mm -hmm. Then there's classism where you have people that are like literally millionaires and mm -hmm. people that are very working class, very low income, mm -hmm. and we are we are all living in this community together, but mm -hmm. have such different experiences. Yeah, and we're so, all living together but separate. Yeah. Like, Basically. So I feel like that has been one of the biggest challenges of like trying to do this work, you know, with like a pure heart and wanting to see my community do better. And then also seeing just like the issues um, just be overwhelming. Like people are just trying so hard to just work to get by. Yeah. So it makes it hard for us to want to fight on the other issues. It makes it hard to want to be engaged. Like just last night we had a career panel at Davidson and yeah, it was a great was opportunity. That? I mean, yeah. I loved it, but not a lot of families went, you know, oh. and so just, and just the engagement. What was the career panel for? It was to for Women's History Month. It was an oh. amazing panel. I mean, I feel just so inspired by sitting along these women and learning about them. But like, we have to figure out a way to make things more accessible to make sure people show up you know and it takes a lot of work and, and so, effort it's yeah. a big big effort yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. because we think you just can't rely on people to and this co this can apply to a lot of things in marin i think another example that comes to mind is the farmer's market mm -hmm. oh, so yeah. the farmer's market when you go it's like not much for one for younger people to go mm -hmm. do like it's it's a place for us to hang out because it's cool they close fourth street mm -hmm. down and you can just kind of walk on fourth street which is mm -hmm. cool but it's like it gets boring after a mm -hmm. while yeah. you know there isn't very much for people that are younger that want to do something mm -hmm. that other than just buy food and hang out i guess but it's like yeah. not activities it's because marin still is kind of stuck in that era where like okay we're catering to all these older people who you know don't like staying up mm -hmm. at night and just want to yeah. get things done earlier and they cater to that crowd yeah. and it sucks because mm -hmm. it affects all the other youth around us and all the other younger people here and the good thing is that there's a lot of new like new of your generation my generation kimberly's generation like all of our generations we're starting to come up with more businesses yeah. here yes. opening up more areas here that are again more inviting more diverse yeah. and ultimately leading to a big change that marin's been needing for a while yeah. it's mm -hmm. going to take time but we're making the changes yes. now yes. which is really really important thank you for bringing that up i definitely love that i definitely think that there are things that are taking a long time to change but we are a part of that change yeah. Yeah. you know because we are staying here and we are resilient and we and we are creating things that didn't exist before mm -hmm. you know yeah. yeah and i felt that way also with like mcyc mm -hmm. like when i first got into it i thought like maybe like i'm not the, the only person of color or like mm -hmm. and stuff like that and i was kind of like i didn't really know who was gonna like be yeah. a part of it and then i when i saw that you were the one who was running it it kind of made me feel better because yeah. then it's like when you see someone in a position that like you want to be in later on then you get that inspiration of keep keeping yes. going because like sometimes like i have felt like in like i don't know if intimidated is the right word mm -hmm. but like with other people who are white and they're rich and stuff mm -hmm. and yeah. like sometimes like 
I don't think it's their fault that they're like they don't see it as bragging, but like they're bragging about certain things, and then I'm like, I didn't grow up that way. Like, yeah, I don't know how that feels. Yeah. So. And I think that's what's really affecting our education in our schools is that there's this huge disconnect where yeah. we can't really relate to our teachers or to the admin, yeah. and so it's like even if you want to help us, you don't really know how to help mm-hmm. us. So we we really need more people of color, like in all professions, yeah. really supporting that next generation. And that I would say is one of the things that I'm most proud of. It's like to me something to young people is so special Mm -hmm. to be somebody that people can call and ask for help or you know when I do the presentations and they really are able to say wow I didn't know that I could do that Mm -hmm. because we don't grow up having doctors lawyers all these professionals in our families Mm -hmm. or whatever you know different things and so it's hard to know what's possible yeah um but but we really are changing that little by little Mm -hmm. and I love that yeah Yeah. and thank you for adding that um both of you about just again the just feeling uncomfortable yeah Mm -hmm. you know at at times and and yeah i mean growing up in marin my whole life i've i've gotten to see so many beautiful houses and be inside of the the houses of a lot of my white friends and you know i'm 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 good friends i'm not saying anything against white people Mm -hmm. it's just that i think in marin especially since it's very liberal as well we get a lot of white people who are like oh yeah we're friends with latino people yeah we're friends with but it's just like they can't relate to us yeah at a, a certain level you know what i mean yeah um and I mean, I'm glad that, you know, that there's a lot less. Well, no, that's not true. There is not. There is racism in Marin. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. There is. Um, But again, when you're meeting someone in a professional setting um, and then they get to tell you about all these businesses they opened up and how their sons are in these big colleges and Mm -hmm. all that, you're like, okay, great. But like that makes me feel a little weird and Mm -hmm. it makes me feel like you're kind of just belittling me by telling me all this. Mm -hmm. But to them, it's normal because when they're talking to other people that are in the same class as them, you know, it's it's like normal for them, you know? It's it's just normal talking like that and talking about stuff like that. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I I really appreciate you guys Mm -hmm. bringing that up because, again, I feel like that a lot as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like... That's why we have Samantha like that in <laughs> in this role, helping us people of color to feel more uplifted. And I thank you for that. <laughs> and I kind of want you to elaborate a little bit more on your position and what you do and how it is being a woman of that position. Yeah. So like working within the county and behavioral health and recovery services Mm -hmm. in bilingual outreach and engagement, we're trying to get more Latinos to more Spanish speakers Mm -hmm. to connect to the services that we do, um, that we provide, but it is hard because of some of the things that we're talking about. So people work all the time, right? Sometimes people don't understand maybe what are some of the signs of mental health issues or substance use. And Mm -hmm. so we're not really aware that we may benefit from help. There's also like a severe distrust, right? If you're undocumented, um, you know, trusting the system. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think for me, it's really about trying to build that trust with the community to know that we're here for them and then also trying to work within the system of are we becoming a welcoming place Mm -hmm. how can we make people feel more comfortable how can we make people feel like they belong because Mm -hmm. it is hard when you're you're dealing in these systems where people of color are the minority you know and i'm still really new so i haven't met everybody yet Mm -hmm. but but we definitely you we we work with a lot of people from different backgrounds but um but but the county isn't, um, you know, it probably wants to continue to get more diverse. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm not quite sure exactly like what what the racial breakdown is. But I think it's like it's hard sometimes when you are in a group and are maybe the only Latina or the only, or the only Spanish speaker mm-hmm. yeah. to always feel this pressure of like, yeah. I got to advocate for my community. I mm-hmm. got to, you know, and so I think those are the things that we have to talk about one of the things that i want to start in my in my role is i want to start like an affinity space like a support group Mm. for latinos and latinas that are in the department yeah so we can come together Mm. like uh, i met with one of my coworkers a few weeks ago and we made like bracelets we made like keychains and we just talked about work and i was like i felt so validated and like seen and appreciated so i want to be able to create that space for other latinos that might be feeling a little isolated Mm -hmm. you know in the work that they're doing so i'm i'm still new and i'm still trying trying to figure out exactly what I can do mm-hmm. but it, it really does you know your race and your gender affect things yeah um, that is true and especially as a woman like working I, I feel like I haven't really experienced it but I can imagine that like working with a lot of men especially older rich men <laughs> you might feel like a little yeah. uncomfortable working with them because like I know like with myself when I 
at my other job i work with um a lot of like white kids yeah <laughs> and it's kind of like weird because they always like talk about like random things and like i'm kind of like just there because like, i just don't really relate to them yeah and then like for me a way for me to like advocate for like my community is like none of them like speak spanish mm -hmm. i'm like honestly like the only spanish speaker so when like a customer comes in and i can tell that they speak spanish they literally always tell me they're like oh can you go like take their order because like they're hispanic and i'm like mm -hmm. okay yeah i can and like it kind of like feels a little weird but like in a way like i like that i'm doing that and i'm able to like bring that into the workplace i guess mm -hmm. yeah that's good. I, I, I agree with you because when I was working um, a lot of retail jobs, too, I didn't mm -hmm. have there weren't, wasn't really much diversity in in, in the employees. So, yeah. yeah, again, like whenever there was a Hispanic person who couldn't really speak English and they would call me to t talk. To, and I've always kind of enjoyed that. And I think mm -hmm. since I like, you know, I got my first job when I was like 16. So it's like I had that experience already. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also what helped me realize, like, I actually really like helping people out especially like newcomers yeah. you know mm -hmm. people who are new to the country mm -hmm. yeah. um and that want you know the support and and that it's like really really nice to like just see them feel comfortable and mm -hmm. like i can be a person to make them feel comfortable absolutely mm -hmm. um, true. but kind of steering things a little differently here i actually wanted to m talk to you uh, samantha about so at mcyc did you lead or i've seen that you've led kind of like a like a girl support group or like yes. girl group outings and stuff yes, like that like how you. can you talk about those yes. and, and kind of how those yeah are thank, yeah thank you for bringing that up so first things first is this was in collaboration with my friend miriam so shout out to miriam and we um <clears throat> She, she was working at Canal Alliance at the time. I was working at the Marin County Youth Commission. Yeah. And Marin County Parks puts out these grants called the Respira Grants. Mm. And the point is for nonprofits and organizations to apply for this money to take groups out into nature yeah. with a big emphasis on people of color, you know, people that usually don't spend a lot of time outside. So we mm -hmm. decided let's take a group out of Latinas out into nature, have these amazing field trips. Let's get to, you know, be who we would have wanted when we were young. Yeah. Um, and in a way like reclaim that nature because mm -hmm. everything that we're talking about like we feel uncomfortable out in nature sometimes why people make us feel uncomfortable outside in nature mm -hmm. like you know and so the, these the, the grant that we did was about taking these latina girls out into nature um and then we got to do like um mental health work talk about what's going on in their lives you know and really create like a really supportive and beautiful and unique space um and it just felt really good to do that with my friend miriam um to kind of co-create this project and it, it was part of something that she had been doing which was like this entre mujeres group um and then we also um made sweatshirts that said poderosas and nice. i love that slogan and i love just helping <clears throat> helping young girls especially young latinas to feel poderosas to feel empowered and to just know that they are so amazing exactly how they are i think is is something super important and it's an honor to be able to like be that adult in in the lives of, of young girls and still on that subject i i was curious uh, and if you're comfortable sharing yeah. what are some of the issues that you saw that maybe you you and that group of girls talked about like what or what have you seen in the work that you've been doing has been like common issues yeah. among especially young latina women or, or you know women of color in general yeah. in this community yeah i think one of the one of the important issues is just the lack of educators of color for them to connect to in the mm. school day they also really talked a lot about like the annoying harassment that they face by like other Latinos. Like mm. it could be our tios, our dads or whatever, you know, in canal, in the street corners, outside of MCM. I mean, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, the, the, like all these things. <laughs> when you said outside of MCM. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, no. Real. They're everywhere. They're mm. everywhere. And but so, they're everywhere. Yeah, and so I think you know, like the cat calling and mm -hmm. like, yeah. like making teen girls feel uncomfortable. That was like a, a common pattern. Mm -hmm. It's really disgusting up. behavior. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. and it's like a lot of like Latinas are also. Um, like people of color especially are like sexualized because yeah. of their body because yeah. mm -hmm. like like you know how like there's that like theme of like oh white girls are like just skinny and then like Latinas are like curvy and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So there's a lot of that. I remember when I was growing up, like in high school, it was like that a lot. And then like a lot of guys would always like call, call like the Latinas and yeah. everything. And it yeah. was so uncomfortable. Yeah, it's a thing. Like women of color are fetishized. Mm -hmm. yeah. It happens to like Asian women, all different kinds of cultures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's really um, like 
teen girls are already have such a great understanding of like the good and the bad of our society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and so and so it, it's it's great to work with them. And then it's also sad that we have to talk about these issues that like if our society could just get it together and like be more respectful and mm -hmm. treat women better, mm -hmm. um, it'd be a lot better. Well, it's mm -hmm. also sure. just calling out like these people, you know, mm -hmm. when they do it. Mm hmm. Um, I know uh, we've had uh, so one of our programs here at MCM Presente. Mm -hmm. um, we've we've also had to deal with some issues of some of the people outside just cat calling yeah. some of these you know yeah. teenage girls that are coming in, and you know we had um, luckily we had Diango. So shout out mm -hmm. to Diango. Yeah. You know he comes out there and he tells them, hey, look, these girls, they're minors, they're coming into this. You're making coming into our building. You're making them feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Like chill out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. chill out. Like and he always uses the example. Like, imagine this is like your niece. Mm -hmm. Imagine this was your little sister. Mm -hmm. How would you be feeling? Yeah. About somebody else that's much older doing that. You Absolutely. know what I mean? So it's like, exact like again, other guys calling other guys out on stuff like that. Yeah. Super important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Super yeah. super important. Yeah, um, and and when we talk about like women's issues, like it is so important to have male allies. Yeah, you know because the the reality is is that a lot of these injustices or these systemic things are related to decision makers. We have a lot of men that make the decisions, you know, and this brings us straight into like reproductive rights and women's rights. It's like mm -hmm. like men should not be controlling what happens to women's bodies. Like that is mm -hmm. one of the biggest issues that I am passionate about. It's like women deserve access to healthcare, access to abortions, access to reproductive rights which you know like as a latina let's be honest like abortion is a hard issue within the latino community yeah and it's so important that we talk about it you know mm -hmm. it's like let's try to like separate our religious feelings mm -hmm. from like our healthcare feelings you know because sometimes there's a variety of reasons for why it can sa save a woman's life yeah. and yeah. so i really like i'm a huge advocate for healthy and safe abortions and mm -hmm. um we got to talk about it and i know it's uncomfortable yeah yeah yeah, I totally agree, especially with people who are newcomers. Like, you have that cultural idea of, like, yeah. like I also grew up, like, abortion's bad. You shouldn't do it. And it's mm -hmm. kind of, like, a cultural and, like, religious thing. Yep. And in, especially if you're a newcomer, like, you don't know these things and you don't know these resources. And I feel like or now... Having to get married very... At yeah, a, and getting age, married, like, at a, a very family young at a young age. Like, yeah. it's just... Mm -hmm. and, I, and I just want to say that, like, I... Um, admire and i think that so many women in our community do such a great job of being mothers oh, right yeah. and i think it's something that you know I, I hope to become a mother soon and do that and at the same time like sometimes it's just not the right time you know so i haven't really talked too much about this but i think it's important to use my platform to spread awareness mm -hmm. but when i was in like my early 20s i had an abortion mm -hmm. and i was with somebody who ended up becoming abusive right mm -hmm. and so it would have been a horrible situation to have a child in mm -hmm. you know and i was able to get out of that and i was able to kind of do all of these amazing things things that i've mm -hmm. done and and so that's not to say that when you have a child young you can't do amazing things yeah. you absolutely can right but for my path mm -hmm. all of the things that i've able to accomplish were because i made that very difficult decision to say i'm not ready to be a mom i don't think this is the right person to have a kid with and why it's important for us to have a safe and reliable place to get these um these procedures done mm -hmm. yeah. so I, i'm really passionate about that issue mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I feel like it needs to be talked about more. Yeah. A lot. Especially because, like, a lot of, I know, like, a few teenagers who, like, have gotten pregnant, and, like, a lot of the time, like, they don't want to, but it's, like, their parents that are making them because they feel like, like, they they got themselves into that situation, right. basically. And so their parents are like, you have to go through with it. But, like, they know that they don't want to, and they're young. And I, like, knew someone who was like that, and, like, she didn't want to have one. But she ended up having it because of her parents. Mm. But like she loves her baby and all. But it's like she wished that she sh didn't have that, that she had her own choice. Yeah. Choice. Exactly. Basically. Yeah. 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 And we also have to talk about, you know, um, contraception and mm -hmm. ways to prevent it ways to prevent pregnancy in the first place yeah which in the latino community is hard it's not because, talked like, about we're, we're, yeah we're just not supposed to be having sex which just isn't yeah. realistic and also same with like birth control it's like mm -hmm. not really a thing until you're over 18 that or like at least for me like my mom would say don't get like on any pills mm -hmm. or anything until you're after 18 because yeah. like 
because you're not a woman yet and like they have the idea of like it's gonna mess up your body and stuff yeah. like that yeah. yeah. And, and that's why it's just important to be informed. And I just want to plug in for our listeners that Huckleberry has a teen clinic on Tuesdays. And then in Novato, there's also the Novato teen clinic. And mm -hmm. so you can go and just learn more. I mean, there, it's so important to just be informed on what is available to you mm -hmm. and, and what and what is right for you. Yeah, yeah exactly. No, that, that's super important. I think sex education in general mm -hmm. is yeah. really, really important for both men and women. Yeah. And again, it's just a cultural and religion thing, um, mm -hmm. especially for newcomers. Uh, we're talking about Latino culture here. You know, it's just a lot of people have very old speculations and really old ideals uh, mm -hmm. in which, like, women and girls, especially, uh, we haven't, we, we'll, I c we can touch this, touch on this a little bit later, but, like, again, even the role of Latina women in the mm -hmm. household. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's a big, mm -hmm. big, big topic that's a big there, too. <laughs> too. Yeah. Um, but again, that's all part of this whole, like, just no edu like just uh, it's not that they're not educated it's just that the, that's the way they were taught when they were growing up mm -hmm. but you know things have changed yeah. a lot here yeah. uh, especially in america so yeah thank you both for bringing that up and being very open about that because I, I know that's that's a really hard subject for yeah for no, women to talk about. i'm happy to talk about it and i think that's when you do have a platform and when you are known i think it comes with the responsibility to to like help educate people and mm -hmm. talk about i also talk about domestic violence you mm -hmm. know when i do my classroom presentations of like it doesn't matter how strong you are how smart you are or whatever we never know what it can happen to anyone we're going to yeah. find ourselves in and so reducing that stigma and making it yeah. okay to ask for help mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. I was just going to say in the stigma also with men, with domestic violence, like a lot of people think with men, like it, it never happens to a man, but like it yep. does happen. It's just like they're just not willing to talk about it because they feel like they yeah. they are going to be judged by it because like that's not supposed to happen to a man, yeah. I guess. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. just being aware that it happens to both genders. It's yeah. just not one gender. And like m emotional abuse, mm -hmm. too. It's like it doesn't even have to be physical, but it's just like really learning and unlearning things that are harmful. Because I think like in the Latino culture, we've glorified this idea of like toxicos. <laughs> yes. Uh, and that's, yeah. not that's, 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 that's not cute. That's It's not cute. I've seen that in honestly and in, in just relationship culture in general now. Yeah. Uh, this this ha being part of toxic relationships and how it's just a thing. And I'm like, yeah. how, why? Like, why are we... Why are we like making memes about this stuff? Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. it's it's terrible that people are even in those types of relationships to begin with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I think we're gonna go into a quick break and we'll be right back. Great. Mm -hmm. Oh no, music. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> okay. we'll just Wait, it's, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> um, okay, no music, but we will be having a quick PSA for open mic. And Javier, you want to talk about that? Sure, yeah. So um, so open mics are back uh, after a three-month hiatus. Uh, but we're back. Uh, we've been going since January. So uh, for, as a reminder, open mics are the last Friday of every month. Um, and it's from 6 to 8 p.m. here at the Multicultural Center of Marin. Uh, and there is free pizza and free drinks. And it's just an overall great area for you to meet some new people meet a lot of local artists in the area um it's just a lot of fun and and uh we, yeah we really invite all of our listeners anyone that's watching uh to come and join us um mm -hmm. again so our next open mic will actually be next friday uh, which i think is march 29th could be wrong but I it's next it's friday um and yeah we hope to see you guys there from six to eight and yeah that's kind of mm -hmm. the only announcement i wanted to give out Thank you so much. Okay, we're going to dive right back in. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> um, okay, we're going to... I want to go back talking about what does... This kind of like switching a little bit. Mm -hmm. What is Women History Month to you? Yeah. I think Women's History Month to me is about celebrating um, the contributions of women to our society. Um, I would like for it to be like less performative and more like based in reality like i it's not enough to like have these campaigns of like women are amazing we love you mm -hmm. like give us equal pay right <laughs> <laughs> give us like maternity leave give us um you know our reproductive rights back give us um like justice mm -hmm. when h horrible things happen to us you know mm -hmm. so i think there's kind of like this like idea of like we love our women mm -hmm. but then the reality is is that our women are going through a lot of harm mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think for me personally it is, has been an opportunity so i recently started hosting the spanish show you know mm -hmm. Cuerpo Corazón Comunidad, and it's been really fun to really showcase local women in our community and so i think for me it's like 
whenever I have the opportunity, how am I sharing something with someone? How am I empowering, uplifting their business, their mm -hmm. opportunity? And so I think for me, it's like making sure that I'm always trying to like support the next generation or, or talk about my friends in some way and what they're doing. So just really kind of like uplifting other people, um, giving them opportunities and just celebrating them and sharing what they do with other people. Cause mm -hmm. that's, what's really cool about the radio show. It's like some people watch it live. Some people watch it later. Some people are on podcasts regardless of how you're listening to it you are learning about these women you mm -hmm. are learning about different people's stories mm -hmm. um and then you know just also just doing like shout outs in the show like i'm mm -hmm. always shouting out like my mom my sister my bestie i have so many women in my life yeah that are just so fierce mm -hmm. and inspiring and um just have helped me so much that like to be the samantha that i am today is because of a lot of women that have loved and supported and nurtured me. Mm -hmm. um, so always paying that forward. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. I love that. I think for me, just mm -hmm. just speaking from a you know from a male perspective yeah. here, uh, you know I, I've always seen Women's History Month as awesome. You know, like I, I I have a lot of female friends, and I'm really happy to say that because you know back in back in before high school, really. I didn't really have that many female friends. You know, I had mostly like a male friend centric friend, but I'm glad that I, I was able to be friends with females, especially ones that, again, just be friends with them. Because I think there's always this stigma where like, oh, if you're friends with a lot of females, mm -hmm. it means you're trying to get all, get yeah. with them all or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, I think we've moved on from that kind of idea because yeah. now we see a lot of a lot more like just great relationships formed between just male and females. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it doesn't always have that. That's what. Again, some people have their own opinions on this, but I, I think it's just good for a male to have so much, again, to just be surrounded by more females and be able to talk with them mm -hmm. and be more comfortable around them mm -hmm. because ultimately that's healthier yeah. for our society. Yeah. Because a lot of this crime that we see against women is from people, from guys especially, who have never had contact with a woman, mm -hmm. who rarely talk to women, yeah. who have, and then they start creating all these like weird ideas in their head. Yeah. Right? Just, that's, that's what happens a lot of the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need more understanding, yeah. like, between the genders, you know? Like, I, I like following a lot of content from guys on social mm -hmm. media, like, on TikTok and stuff, mm -hmm. where they're, like, talking to other men, and they're saying, hey, like, you know, in terms of, like, healthy relationships, right? Different attachments and things like that. Mm -hmm. It's so refreshing to hear it from, like, the male's perspective. Yeah. Because, you know, like, I, I think we really do a disservice to our males because there isn't a lot of spaces for them to express themselves, their emotions. Mm -hmm. Like, it, there, there's just these issues in society that keep us separate instead of like communicating and working towards each other you know because it's like we shouldn't be like pitted against each other Absolutely we not. are all human beings and deserve this like healthy thriving society and that's just not what we're living in right now mm -hmm. and I, I think a big thing too that i want to bring up is just how important it is to for, for men especially to learn just to talk to women mm -hmm. and just be comfortable with our women because sometimes like guys can be a little too nice mm -hmm. and i can throw some women off mm -hmm. and be like okay maybe he's being a little too nice or being do that it's just like again it's just being able to be in a situation where you don't make anyone else feel uncomfortable yeah and knowing like cues mm -hmm. and stuff like that yeah. and that's great yeah. i mean as, as someone who's in their mid-20s now as I've been able to go to bars. Yeah. And at bars, you get to see all sorts yes. of different people. Yes. And you get to see, again, like how, how women are treated at bars, especially. Mm -hmm. And that's why, and also at nightclubs, yeah. right? And I've actually come to learn that there's women-only nightclubs mm -hmm. or women-only mm -hmm. bars. Mm -hmm. um, because sometimes women just want to, you know, just yeah. be with other women yeah. and have a good time and not have to be disturbed by some drunk dude who's trying to, you know talk to him or, or yeah. feel uncomfortable right it's all about yeah. being comfortable so yeah and just remember people's boundaries like boundaries can, yep. I, can mm. I hug you like do you feel comfortable yep. Like I, yep. 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 yeah yep. i think there's situations sometimes where like it has happened to me where like because of the different things that i do in the community i go to like fancy events right again <laughs> it's uncomfortable like as a latina mostly white people whatever but like i have felt like sometimes people like hug me or like kiss me on the cheek and like i'm not you didn't want that. i didn't want that mm. and yeah. i and like even though i'm so outspoken and so good good at like speaking up for myself there are moments where i freeze and i'm like why did i allow for that to happen like that was so creepy that was mm -hmm. so weird right and so i think just like just like normalizing that like things are gonna happen that make us feel uncomfortable right and so like i want to be better about in the moment like actually can you not touch me mm -hmm. like i, I want to be able to like say my boundary in the moment because it feels really gross when you're like why did it, why did that happen to me you feel like you did something wrong yes, yeah exactly it's just like why mm -hmm. is this creep putting his arm around me yeah mm -hmm. um 
So yeah. Yeah. yeah I feel you on that. <laughs> um, for me personally, I see Women's History Month as a way to just like recognize other women and recognize all that we've been through basically because like I see it kind of more as like history in a way yeah where it's like we came so far yeah. from like not being able like we were directed as housewives like mm -hmm. all for like centuries weren't able to vote we weren't able to vote we came through all this and then like recognizing the women now in those positions like yourself and like looking up to them and like thanking them for being in those positions and like helping us as youth be better and like strive yeah. for that as well because yeah. especially like someone coming from an immigrant family mm -hmm. it's like kind of hard to like no no one in my family has ever um like gotten like their bachelors or yeah. anything mm -hmm. like yeah. that so it's like i want to be like one of the first in my family hopefully yeah. to do that as yeah. well to do to accomplish that and be able to work I still want, I mean, I'm doing nursing, but I still want to be able to contribute with nonprofit and yeah. still work with nonprofit work yeah. aside from that. Yeah. So that is my goal to do that. Yeah. Well. And you're going to do it. And I'm super yeah. proud of you. Yeah, yeah you're going you're gonna <laughs> to do great things, Kim. And, and thank, thank you for you. sharing that because, mm -hmm. again, it's setting an example. Mm -hmm. Setting an yeah. example for this, for, for the generations to come. Yeah. Like I was saying before, kind of all of our intermingled generations here. Mm -hmm we're all making a change yeah. for that. And I, I think the other thing too, that I've noticed a lot now recently too, is a lot more women in fields that are male dominated. Yeah. So um, personal example of mine is, uh, so, you know, I, I graduated for audio engineering and audio engineering and sound design is a very male centric dominated mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. Um, but now, like on YouTube, when I'm looking at ways to learn more and stuff, I see a lot of female mm -hmm. audio engineers now, and they're awesome. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. so cool to see them like be super talented yeah. at what they're doing. And and again, like I I had this friend um, when I was going to school, and she you know was one of two girls out of like a class of forty mm -hmm. guys. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, being able to like kind of talk to him, be like. Like, yeah, like, how do you feel, you know, being in, in this kind of room? And they're like, we don't, like, I feel, I feel fine. You know what I mean? Like, I don't feel like anyone's too intimidating. And I, and I felt that from that mm -hmm. room too. Like, I felt like none of us were being too pushy on her or like yeah. treating her differently. Mm -hmm. Right. That's that big thing. Treating her differently or treating her in a certain way. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any of that. Mm -hmm. um, and now she's doing well. She's yeah. in her own, she has her own little studio area and she's doing great. And that makes me super, super, super happy mm -hmm. to see because I'm glad that she wasn't turned off by like, again, mm -hmm. seeing so many Again, being in a male-dominated industry. Yeah. Um, and again, that can be applied to a whole other mm -hmm. amount of industries, but that's the one that I've seen personally, seen a lot more women involved Absolutely. in now. And I'm just so glad that mm -hmm. it's heading in that direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as a woman of color, does this impact your position with the county? Because I, when I have gone to like the count, like Civic Center, it's mm -hmm. like all mainly like white people that I see. Yeah. <laughs> so how is that <laughs> impacted? Yeah. And, you know, to be honest, like the county system as mm -hmm. a whole is huge. Like, mm -hmm. I don't even know how many thousands of people work like, yeah, for the county of Marin. Mm -hmm. Like for me, we're on the other side of the Civic Center at like 20 North San Pedro Road. Mm -hmm. And um, like within Health and Human Services, that's the largest department. I think there's like about mm -hmm. 700 or 800 people. Wow. And then within B BHRS, there's a few other hundred people. It's a you lot know? of people. And, <laughs> yeah. But I think but I think what's really important and what really helps me and what I want other people to to do is like find your people. Like even within uncomfortable settings, even within uncomfortable workplaces or departments, like I'm finding who I can lean on. I'm finding mm -hmm. the people like mm -hmm. Mario, I'm um, Jessica, like people that make me feel safe. Um, and, and creating kind of that, um, that nurturing environment that makes me feel a little bit better, you mm -hmm. know? So it's like, the reality is, is that like in Marin, I don't, I don't think we're ever going to be the majority because this place has a lot of millionaires and a lot of rich people. Yeah. Right. And a lot it's of trust fund kids. So many trust fund kids to live here. here. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we have to figure out how can we survive and thrive under the circumstances that we're in. So like yeah. creating that safety, recognizing like we won't be the majority that maybe works at the county, mm -hmm. but we can have our small groups and we can have our safety and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Sorry. And like going off of that, like with institutional and societal changes, yeah. what, what do you think should be made with women 
to be more empowered in that in that way yeah i mean i definitely think a that, lot but <laughs> yeah i definitely think that the reproductive um mm -hmm. direction that the laws are going in this country is mm -hmm. super sad mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and so it's like reversing that mm -hmm. um in california it's a little bit different but in other places in, in other states and i think really like advocating for equal pay is super yeah. important it's like women make less money for the same amount of work if not more work yeah right um and then i think um supporting working mothers like mm -hmm. creatively you know it's like we kind of like penalize mothers for having kids and make it really hard for them to work and juggle all of those things mm -hmm. um you know and then i also think something that's a little bit more international is like femicidas like homicides of like women you know it's mm -hmm. like they're motivated mm -hmm. by gender like yeah. women are murdered yeah. and like you know like in mexico they march a lot for it in south america they march for it right and so i think just like justice for and even women. In like in the middle east there's yeah. a, the, the whole issue with you know um again if we're talking international here like what the way that women are treated around the world is it's all very different yeah. mm -hmm. and more extreme mm -hmm. um which is unfortunate and really sad to hear because again like seeing all these women uh from the middle east are like covered up and have to be covered up because of religion purposes or because of you know mm -hmm. the, the way that society has been formed mm -hmm. there and then hearing all these stories come out about how you know they've been on part of really bad situations yeah. it's just really to me that's really important for me to hear because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then it makes me understand mm -hmm. like okay like that's an issue there like yeah i can only imagine like again the suffering yeah. that the other women feel when they're here yeah. in america yeah. and across the, like you said and, and unfortunately like violence against women is so is still like a common yeah. thing here in america and in yeah. south america as yeah. well like in our home countries like yeah. it's just it's just sad to me that that again that's just still a thing and and a lot of that i think also is because of the um the alcohol problems that we have, mm -hmm. um, especially with Latino men yeah. having very bad uh, um, alcohol problems and how that can destroy families. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, you know, I'm always really grateful that, you know, my mom um, was, you know, took care, took like, I think being born to a Latina mom mm -hmm. really helped me un understand and respect women so much more because like my mom always taught me to be like, okay, you're never going to lay hands on a yeah. woman. You never do that. Yeah. You never shout to, to, you know, your significant other or anything mm -hmm. like you need to be like this. Okay. Yeah. And you also need to understand that the women aren't always going to be doing all the stuff in the house. Like you yeah. need to learn how to cook. You need to learn yeah. how to clean the house. Like this yeah. is all things that you should be knowing anyways. Yeah. Um, and I'm really, really grateful that my mom, you know, taught me that all that yeah. and was again, because there's a lot of a lot of these people that again commit this violence. They just either didn't have a parent, didn't have a second parent, or it's just mm. it just sucks. You know what I mean? That yeah. they just didn't get that education growing up. Yeah, mm, that is so true. Yeah. And going off that, women are treated terribly in a lot of different situations, and I think we still have like a lot to improve on mm. as a society yeah. and like internationally. And we say that a lot. And what are specific changes that you would like to see within how we are treated here? Yeah, I mean, I think that's like a super hard question. I think, yeah. th I, let me like narrow it just like yeah. Marin, in Marin County. Yeah, I mean, I think in, in Marin County, it's just like trying to work on that ca ca cat calling issue, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, which is like, it's hard to like work on something locally that really is like, a cultural issue that mm -hmm. happens you know everywhere. E everywhere and it's kind of like really been normalized right mm -hmm. and and these people don't care dude like like i remember when i was growing up and my mom and i would go to like the yeah. bus stop or yeah. they, they think they would still cat call my mm -hmm. my mom and that mm -hmm. stuff like like as a kid i was mm -hmm. i would always get so uncomfortable and really mad mm -hmm. about that so i'm like what the heck mm -hmm. i'm with my mom yeah. like why yeah. would they still do that you that know happened I mean? to me when i was i was like in high school and i was walking with my little brother and mm -hmm. it was like the weirdest thing and Dude, i just told my so i was walking my brother i just told him like keep walking he's yeah. like why are they saying that yeah Ugh. and i was like just keep walking no not good not it's good just, yeah i also would say like more like training and learning opportunities for yeah. women to like start their own businesses mm -hmm. or you know um I think like economic opportunities is super important to help women feel more independent, you know, because mm -hmm. that's another thing that's changing, too. You know, it's like so, some women are starting to, you know, go to college, make good money and become like the breadwinners of their family or, you know. And so things are kind of like evolving as as we go. Mm -hmm. But but making sure that women have the opportunity to like follow their dreams and like be able to have multiple identities that are not only like having babies and like cleaning the house like.
like that is just super outdated and um like really disrespectful and not fair to women mm-hmm. right and so it's like we really mm-hmm. need to be having more of like um like a partnership between yeah. the genders to be like okay like and i do see a lot of that on tiktok and social media which i think is good i think like things are getting better in terms of like splitting the chores like having like like normalizing dads, it normalizing it dads be like mm. more involved parents yeah. like, for so long like women have had this huge responsibility to just like do so much for their house and for their kids right mm-hmm. um and so i think yeah giving women opportunities to just better themselves in whatever ways they want mm-hmm. and and think and really taking care of like the mental health of women we talked about it a few weeks ago on the other show of like postpartum depression yeah right other other like women because of our reproductive system deal with a lot of different illnesses yeah. and just you know having more information about what goes on in our bodies um and i would say just more support for women like Mm -hmm. there's like these two things that are true at the same time Mm -hmm. there's like a lot of support for women and a lot of love and also a lot of like hate and jealousy and like so it's kind of like let's just really support each other and like be better like i i have never left like a mean comment on social media like Mm -hmm. i don't know why we like troll and hate on each other like what let's let's work on that you know Mm -hmm. um let's let's be better to each other like even as women Mm -hmm. i feel for myself like as like because that kind of brought into my head like part of the youth Mm -hmm. what i kind of want to see is and i and i still kind of do see this now but with a lot of these like programs and all that there's like so many programs because like since i'm a part of the multicultural center like if i would have never been involved with the multicultural center i would have never known about all these resources all these programs that are out there and it's like especially as like a person of color like i'm not really like brought those opportunities it's kind of like we i feel like we need to like look for it Mm -hmm. but i want it to be kind of more inclusive in a way where it's like brought out towards yeah. Yeah. um hispanic households especially in like canal area because i have had like some uh friends and or like people that i know that are like younger than me and they're still in high school and like i like talk to them like oh like i'm a radio host and i do th- mm-hmm. all this and i and i like being able to give those resources out but like it's the fact like in my head i'm like i'm like dang i don't know how to explain like these like things but i wish like someone like was able to like kind of put it out a little more towards them and not always just towards white people because like they kind of get it because of their parents and like from access from their parents which Mm -hmm. gets passed down to them and all that so i just want like there to just be more access towards you especially like in middle school and i feel like in middle school it's like that's where you kind of like are starting to grow and starting Mm -hmm. to see like who you want to be as a person when you're growing up and just like having that opportunity to explore like different areas in like your life basically and grow in different areas like yeah with like mcyc you can be a part of like a different subcommittees mm-hmm. and like you can see which one you'd like and like maybe that's what you want to do yeah in the future and maybe you want to go into nonprofit work that's what i really like about like all these different like resources and like yeah. re- with presente like with presente they place you in a, in a job site like mm-hmm. maybe that's what you want to do in the future like yeah. just everything being more accessible 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 yeah. <laughs> basically and yeah. i think i think i totally agree with what you're saying mm-hmm. kim i think even when i was in high school i didn't know that all these nonprofits did exist like these mm-hmm. programs and resources that you're talking about but i never one i was never really like interested mm-hmm. i was like in a whole different world when i was in high school mm-hmm. like in high school i was just thinking about one th- like you know my my goals and, and my own goals mm-hmm. but i didn't really mm-hmm. see all these resources around me yeah. because the school didn't really push them out mm-hmm. yeah. for me to find yeah right um and i think the perfect solution here would be to just let these resources be open during advisory classes mm-hmm. yes. right because that's mm-hmm. like when the students are with mm-hmm. a teacher they're kind of yeah. it's a free time area yeah free time area yeah and they those are the perfect opportunities for people to come and yeah. present or talk about this and that and i know they've done that in certain advisory classes but it's like not every advisory class yeah. can get those types of resources so yeah really really important to, mm-hmm. to get them with yeah that. and i just want to add that like i think what you guys do on this show mm-hmm. is that like mm-hmm. you talk about all the variety of programs yeah. and all these great opportunities for young people so i just want to celebrate you guys for that and i think we need to do a better job of getting some teachers and getting the school system mm-hmm. to encourage young people to listen to the show right because yes. it's like the content is out there but it's like making those connections for them to learn about different things and what you said kimberly is like absolutely right it's like 
as as Latinos, as first gen, we need opportunities to try things on mm -hmm. before people are like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Like, yeah. how am I supposed to be a, feel comfortable choosing something when I haven't had an opportunity to try anything or learn exactly. about it? Like, I legit thought I was going to be a tattoo artist. And like, <laughs> <laughs> did, did not, did, yeah, did not go that way. And so... Um, I think it's I, I think it is important that we um, share resources amongst ourselves. And the other thing that I want to encourage is that, like, you don't need permission from anybody to support other people. Mm -hmm. Right. You just need to have like that in your heart mm -hmm. of like, I'm, how, how are you, Kimberly? I want to check in on you. Like, I'm so proud of what you've been doing. Mm -hmm. I want you to know you can call me if you need any help. Mm -hmm. And I think that is like super important. It's like you already in your process can start doing that to high schoolers, can start doing that to middle mm -hmm. schoolers. Yeah. You don't have to wait for anybody to tell you. Mm, it's yeah. like the, the greatness is already inside of you, you know? Yeah. yeah. And Thank I think, you. yeah, that was, that was great. <laughs> uh, I think one big thing, too, that I wanted to highlight was just that I've seen and, and uh, based on a lot of my Latina friends um, is just how fast you need to grow up. Mm -hmm. Like let, Latina women, especially when they're growing up and let's say you have other siblings, you need to take care of that kid yeah. <laughs> basically yeah. and act as the second mom, yeah. which yeah. I think is also super unfair yeah. and mm -hmm. super not a good part of, yeah. again, the way that I think our culture has, has kind of created that the yeah. Latino culture where like, okay, once the girl turns like six or seven there, are, they can start taking care of the little kid, the mm -hmm. little brother or whatever. It's, and, but it's really a systemic thing it's because system, it's like, yeah. we have to work. Like some of my earliest memories are like getting my sister ready before school. Me too. <laughs> giving us <laughs> breakfast, missing the bus yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and like, they just have to work. Yeah. You know? So, and it's just like, it's kind of hard for like mothers to like actually like get like, a babysitter to be able to do all so those expensive. things and it's like expensive especially here in Marin yeah. County yeah. like yeah. some of my friends like they're babysitters and they charge like 45 an hour I'm like dang yes. Yes. and it's like it can be expensive to get a babysitter yeah. here Yeah. So. well also taking care of a kid is a huge yeah. responsibility yeah. Like, yeah. like you know babysitting I think has come a long way because now we live in an era where uh, you know, people are on, on social media all the time mm -hmm. and people are more glued to their phones and, then, you know, they want to have their kids mm -hmm. not be glued to their mm -hmm. phones because, you know, you see a lot of the iPad babies, right? Yeah. Like all these kids <laughs> that are stuck to the yeah. stuck to their iPads and stuff. But again, these parents, like you're saying, um, and I, again, thank you for clarifying that because that is a good point. A lot of these parents are out working. They don't have time yeah. to be with the kid. Yeah. So they have to put that role on. Mm -hmm. And the, multiple things can be true. Like, yeah, we can have to help our siblings and they can also like, have conversations with us of like i know this is kind of unfair but like we have to work together as a family so yeah. i think it's really just about that communication piece you know yeah. of like you are not expected to raise your sibling you just got to help me a little bit in the mornings or something like that you know because yeah. uh, we do put a lot of pressure especially like as first gen like kimberly was saying like going to college and doing all of those like we have to be there to support each other because it can be stressful and it can be hard but there's a lot of us that are graduating. There's like, it's time for me to go get my master's. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for my mentors. I'm looking for people that are going to help me get through that next step. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, ask for help. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. Okay. We are almost off to an end of the show. It's going by a little quick. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to just celebrate, celebrate women's history month. And I just want to have any last words with celebrating yeah, no, I think to just, like, do your best to take care of yourself, to have a circle of strong women around you mm -hmm. that support you. Mm -hmm. uh, and just shout out to all, all um, you know, all women who have, you know, uh, impacted my life, like my mom, my mm -hmm. friends. Like, I appreciate everyone and I appreciate all the women that are actually out there fighting mm -hmm. for women's rights. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and for all the male allies, too, that are there, um, you know, supporting women and and you know, making them feel comfortable mm -hmm. um, in all sorts of situations. So shout out to them as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I also would like to thank every woman and thank you, Samantha, thank for you. being on the show. Thank you for and um, I think now in today's society, especially like as youth, like just just because we're not like or I'm an adult, but like just because <laughs> like we're not like if you don't think you're like you're under 18 and everything, you can continue striving to do what you do and especially if you love it going into like nonprofit, i feel like going into nonprofit is like one of the most amazing things and um i just want to really put that love out there yeah. for everyone in nonprofit as well and thank you samantha for being on the show again thank you for having me <laughs> we'll see you guys next week <laughs> sorry all right take care everyone take care everyone. bye, -bye. bye.